And Michael Jordan was good for business. Yeah. He was, he was great for business. It used to be competitive. Yeah. It used to be competitive. And like, you know, fans want to see the best pickup game in the world. The true growth of the NBA really started thanks to the era of Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Dr. J, and others from that time. We know that. Yes, there were also great players before those men, but the league really started to explode in popularity under Magic and Bird. Then came Michael Jordan and lit a huge fire under the league and made it grow globally 10 times faster. Jordan was a spectacle. No one has ever seen this kind of basketball at the level Jordan brought. I mean, even Isaiah Thomas and many others say that Jordan did for the NBA and its popularity more than any of them were ever able to do. What Michael Jordan did for the NBA, hey man, we all still eating off of that. And Michael Jordan was good for business. Yeah. He was, he was great for business. And what Michael Jordan did for the NBA and our league, he took it to a level that none of us could. We appreciate him for that. We honor him for that. Still getting paid off of that. You want to see Michael's the greatest. I think he, he deserves all the accolades that you really want. I think the man has done more for basketball than any one individual. Even you? A, 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 any one individual. And I'm also saying, too, for those players out there today who maybe don't quite respect Michael as they should, almost all of them should be giving about 10% of their salaries to Michael. Not Wilt, not Russell, not Dr. J, not Bird, Magic, and others. MJ was all by himself higher than everyone else responsible for the tremendous growth of the NBA in the years he played and even after. MJ was the best player in the NBA at the time he played. It was unstoppable on his own. He started winning titles once his team got stronger and he never lost in his prime and with the full season under his belt, ever. He and the legends before him paved the way for the riches and fame the players are bestowed with today. These players and them making the millions upon millions of dollars they make today would not be possible if it wasn't for the hard work and dedication of all the players I named before and especially Michael Jordan. In my opinion, as the saying goes in life, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. Applies here perfectly. What is happening to the NBA these days is that we're truly short on strong men on both sides, and both sides I mean teams and players. Everyone has changed their view so much that the only thing that counts these days are their feelings and money. There's a stark difference between the old players and old league approach and today's players and today's league approach. The NBA used to have loyalty and honor for the most part. The players were loyal to their teams and the teams were many times loyal to their players, especially the superstars. I'm talking here about Magic, Bird, Jordan, even Kobe and players like that. Just listen to what Larry Bird had to say about that. This just blows my mind comparing it to the thinking of today's NBA players. Larry Bird has reported to camp, but his contract is up in two years. He wants a new deal right now. The Celtics aren't negotiating with him, and he was asked if he'd become a free agent. I never go free agent, Sam. I, I'd probably quit before I did that. You know, I, I think if it came down to that, I, I've said before I might, but, you know, if I really sit down and think about it, there's no way. I'd play my two years and just get out of it. If I play an extra year or, or two years, it'd be with the Celtics, unless they trade me. I'll give them everything I got while I have it, and uh, I think that I got a few years left in me, and, and hopefully we can get together and win some championships. That whole approach has changed from trying to put the best product out there and appreciating the fans to what's going on today, just putting a product out there to make the most money. Let me explain. You can make an argument that today's NBA is making more money than they have ever been making and would be right. That does not mean they're doing the right thing for the fans and the sport, and it will come back to haunt them, in my opinion. Also, back in the 90s, NBA didn't have as much revenue as they have now from streaming, league pass, streaming services, online sales of jerseys, and things like that. Those things were not there in the 90s, and the league was doing great either way. The NBA expanded globally, and their international revenue has become a key revenue source, especially China. It's estimated that China generates $500 million 
in revenue annually. So just China, which was not a thing in the 90s, is generating half a billion. Also, part of that revenue includes the Chinese technology giant Tencent's 1.5 billion deal to be the NBA exclusive digital partner. Jersey Patch Revenue The Jersey Patch program was launched in 2016, and on average, the advertisements on the jerseys have netted teams 9.3 million annually. That times 30 teams, and we have 280 million annually. TV Deals TV accounts for most of the NBA revenue. For the 2016-17 season, that's the stats I was able to find, TNT and ESPN re-upped their contracts to an estimated $24 billion in total. The nine-year deal earns the NBA approximately $2.6 billion per year, even with a total of 400 active players, making an average of close to $6.7 million annually as of 2019 and 20. National TV contracts generate enough revenue to cover salaries and then some. You have seen in the video at the beginning how loyal Larry Bird was to the Boston Celtics, for one. He was also very loyal and always wanted to give his best to the Boston fans and all NBA fans at that. Kobe Bryant Michael Jordan always made sure they gave their best to the fans and were never taking off games for load management because they appreciated some fans maybe being able to come to one single game a year or some in their lifetime to see their favorite NBA star. Players back in the day played for the love of the game. Look at Magic Johnson's statement here. Save up your money, buy some tickets for your kids, and then they go to see their favorite player, and he's just resting. I hate it. I dislike it. Michael, I was just at Michael Jordan's 60th birthday party. He pulled me to the side. And, you know, we talked about that for 30 straight minutes. <laughs> yes. We, we want to play every single game. We couldn't wait to get out there on the court. Mm -hmm. And it's about your ego, your passion, your love for the mm -hmm. game. It's about those fans who, like you said, pay yeah. their hard-earned earn money to watch you play yeah. this game of basketball. I mean, Michael Jordan had a literal love of the game clause in his contract with the Bulls. Professional teams don't want their players to go about playing in just about every game, putting them at risk of injuries. Several players, such as Monta Ellis back in the day, and baseball legend Babe Ruth, faced suspension after they sustained injuries during the offseason. So you could imagine the concern of the Chicago Bulls. However, Michael Jordan was not ready to accept that. With that love of the game clause, MJ was free to take part in any exhibition games or just random pickup games if he wanted to, and no one could stop him. Jordan's demands showed his love for the game, which is why he was the only player GM Jerry Krause even considered giving that deal to. Today, NBA players don't give a crap about the fans, and that is why they're hurting the sport and the league long term. The league is making more money and in the end, it is a business, and everyone understands that. But that business thrives only if it has emotionally invested fans watching it. Now, by not caring about their fans, sitting out games for load management, flopping, and doing things like that over time, fans will distance themselves from the league and its players. It's already starting to happen. The young generations that have never seen the comparison to the previous eras will most likely accept the new approach as is. They won't understand the emotional rivalries between teams and cities playing against each other like we had with the Bulls and Knicks, Knicks and Pacers, and other rivalries like Lakers, Spurs and such. When lower expectations are accepted and praised by more and more people, they become the norm. But over time, I think this will hurt the league as everything is just starting to become about money and ring chasing these days. Loyalty from teams to its stars has disappeared. Loyalty and emotional investment from players to their teams and teammates has disappeared. Fans do disrespect NBA players from time to time, and they get thrown out and banned on occasion. But NBA players have been disrespecting the NBA fans more and more these days as well. Players are sitting out games, sometimes some of the most important matchups. I mean, there's a story from Kobe Bryant, which he tells himself, that shows dedication, toughness, and competition. And I, I think the All-Star game in general needs a little revamping because 
it used to be competitive. Yeah. It used to be competitive. And like you know, fans want to see the best pickup game in the world. They want to see the what happens when you get this collection of best basketball players on the planet and they play and they go head up against each other. Man. Yeah. I mean, you guys play harder at a pickup game in UCLA. For real. And ain't billions of people watching. For real. Yeah. Look at how today's NBA players treat the All-Star game, which is supposed to be featuring the best NBA players with the best offensive and defensive games in the NBA. The game is so terrible now that in the last one, we saw a score of 186 to 211, which just shows how terrible it was. It's not about a thousand points being scored, which many of these players in the league seem not to understand. It's about the competition, fight, toughness, and players wanting to really win on both sides and doing everything possible to do so. You see, Kobe was one of the last true old school thinking breed, and he was called an assassin on the court. I really think the NBA has become weak and is becoming weaker by the day. Because of the NBA players we have today and their approach of valuing only themselves, their brands, and money. Not giving a flying fuck about the NBA fans that really pay their salaries. This is visible to people that have a comparison and have watched the NBA for a few decades, but the young kids and casuals will never understand that. Thank you for watching. Check out these two videos that I have um, lined up for you as well. Like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for taking the time to watch this.